Mark Hamill was like the person I saw, and I was like, oh, I could, I could do that. Yeah. yeah. Like I could do, I could swing a sword around and, and mm-hmm. cut people up and whatever. Like that's that's what <laughs> that's what that's I what I, that's what I started with. Yeah. Um, it's not the acting. I want to kill a bunch yeah. of people. <laughs> 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 uh, this is Judy, and uh, now I'm here. <laughs> Hey, sitter chatters! It's back at the. <laughs> <laughs> it's we're here back at the studio, your favorite place with wood paneling, Kramer, George Costanza, and a cutoff photo that you can never really see in my my single coverage. Um, can we? Oh, it's not even in the guest body there. We need we need a single dedicated Ooh, shot. That's what we should do instead of the wide. We should just get one. How about when there's not a guest here, we just get the tight yeah, shot just of get you the tight and shot Trump. Me and Trump. Um, it's offensive. We shouldn't be in the same room, but we're not. He's holding a rose. He's being he's being nice. He's, he's being a good guy. Nice. He's yeah. a good guy. Um, I haven't seen you in. It's two been weeks? a while. Yeah, it's been a while, and I was actually thinking last night I've missed you. I've missed hanging missed out with you, you too. I was going to say we have to go to Arizona this week for a we work do? trip, and uh, yeah, it, it's a plane not trip, work, but it's technically work. Um, and I'm looking forward to that. We're gonna have a good time. Yeah, it'll be fun. What um, happened to your arm? I think he's going to the hospital today. I have to go get an MRI today. It doesn't look like it's severe. When you say like he's got to go to the hospital later, it's like it's such a weird thing. I just can't wait for them to all see you in a cast again. Uh, to be honest with you, dude, I'm dreading it. From what I was looking at online, basically, here's the story. I, I play softball every week. Um, it's my fix on not being able to play baseball anymore. So I play softball every Monday. I've played softball every Monday since I was 16 years old. Um, we used to play in a league together on Saturdays. I dove for a ball. Made the catch. Of course. When I went to land, I put my arm down and my shoulder like popped back. And it just felt like something just tore through here. That whole week just felt miserable. I go to play softball the following week. I I lift my arm to throw. And I just felt like it just felt like something was just tearing. And so the next day I I kind of just rested and then I ended up going to the doctor the next day and the guy was like I feel like you might have popped your shoulder out of place and like popped it back in. It was excruciating when it happened. And uh, he's just worried that something tore when I did it. Because it's mm. it's been three weeks now and it, it's killing me. Can't believe it was just, a, it seems like it was a simple fall. And it was just like, you know, you seem old. It really did feel that way. It felt it's that terrible. way. Yeah, it was kind of a bummer to have that happen. And I, I the thing that I was looking at was like, if it is what he was talking about, it's surgery plus being in a cast for like three months. That's insane. And I just like, I'm like, I'd almost rather deal with the pain. It's a, it's a removable cast, right? I don't know. I think it's one where it like attaches at your hip. But the, like my a, bigger thing is like, and this sounds so stupid, but like I, to not like be able to do physical activity for, yeah, for that three long. months, like I would go insane. Like I would just feel gross, you know? Yeah, but you got to think about long term. I know. You, I, I don't want to live spot. a lifetime of a shoulder pain. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cause my, my brother-in-law, um, what are you doing? Sorry. Just thinking. Um, my brother-in-law tore his, uh, labrum, I think maybe, or his rotator cuff playing baseball and never got it fixed. Cause he just didn't at the time, didn't have the money for the surgery and didn't have like the time yep. to do it. And he, he's like, it still makes him sick to his stomach at this point. Oh, like the pain. Yeah. Yeah. It's been not, like 10 years. Sound good. I know. Um, I have some topics for you. I was going to say, what do you have for me today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, let me pull them up. I hope I, it's something I, more positive than uh, four months in a cast. Cast. So <laughs> I was watching <laughs> our episode with Maggie, mm-hmm. okay? And in that, we talked about weddings, okay? And we talked about you being in weddings. Mm-hmm. And I forgot to tell you that this happened. So that wedding that I was in, in January, Robert and I were sitting next to each other. I was uh, I was a groomsman. And we were all at like the the head table or whatever, mm. and the best man was like, you know, he's got he's like this like Harvard grad, like really smart oh, dude, yeah. well spoken, gives a speech, and Robert taps me on the shoulder and he goes, "You think Jake's gonna be your best man?" And I go, "Yeah," and he goes, "God, I can't wait to see everybody at the wedding go." Oh fuck, what is he gonna say? Wait, we talked about this. Did we talk about it on the show? Yes. Oh my god, I don't watch the show that enough. I am. Oh shit. But I was just thinking, I was like, I, I'm, I am so terrified of whatever your best man speech is going to be. Yeah, well, it just depends on whether or not 
I have been abstinent for that week. If, if, if I'm setting up the bachelor the party. And abstinent? Not having sex with someone? <laughs> abstaining from alcohol, I guess I meant. <laughs> well, it depends on whether or not I have touched myself <laughs> that week of your wedding. Sexually active was there? <laughs> I will be... That I mean that that's an X factor, you know. I could be naked while giving this. Dude, speech. this guy's just so horny. Know. He's pissed. <laughs> yeah. he just can't. Who knows what Jake's gonna do, man? He's so horny. He's so horned up right now. Um. Yeah. No. Well, you well, know what I was go. thinking about was me not having any brothers. Like, I was thinking about this with like you and Bryce, like the people that I could see myself be, I, I would like to believe I'd be in your wedding and Bryce's wedding. And I could see myself being uh best men in those weddings outside of the fact that both of you guys have brothers and it's, yeah. it's, you have to have your brother be the best man, you know? So I'm like, for me, I'm like the only th person I can think of really that I, like is a good friend of mine that doesn't have a brother. So I don't have a person to be my best man. It would have to be a friend, you know, unless I want to put one of my brother-in-laws in Steve, he, but he, I mean, yeah, you can't do it though. You know, you can't put your brother, one brother in law, I have three. You know, I mean, you have known. Weird. I've known Alex, Alex so much longer. Yeah, yeah but like, can. I think it'd still be like, I would, I would want them all to be in my wedding for sure. But like, I wouldn't want them to. Just this is the dude. thing with weddings. I mean, it, it, like, it, it's. Uh, I think it's nice to like highlight your friends, but I, I also think it's delicate because. I think the more understanding people you have, the better it is. But once you have to say, oh, you're going to be a groomsman, you're not going to be a groomsman. I don't want I people to dicey. feel like, yeah. yeah. And I think it's I think it's more important that you say like, oh, if I don't get chosen to be a groomsman, it's not about me. It's their day. So I shouldn't like have a problem yeah. with it. It's hard not to take things personally. But that's the thing about weddings. It's, it's such a big day and it's about you. And I feel like when you include people, people like to be a part of your big day. I, I you realize know? for me, there's a lot of people that I would want to be in my wedding, but I think I would have to, I would have to have like a good bachelor party and yep. say to those people like, this is you being in my wedding. I li can't literally have you standing up there because there's only X amount of people that I can have yeah. up there. And I have this group of people, but like you are here because you mean just as much to me, you know, th that all that semantics, like this is the group of people that I really love. Cause I was thinking about it. Cause it's like, I have three brother-in-laws and it would be weird for me to not put them in my wedding. You know, they remember mm -hmm. I was in all their weddings. And so it's like, then there's groups of friends though that I'm like, yeah, I would want them, but like, are they close enough to it? So it's a whole thing. But anyway, we're not getting into weddings. <laughs> this was just a side note that I wanted to tell you. Dave Attell's new stand-up came out. Who? He's, Dave Attell. You know Dave Attell? He's an old stand-up comedian. You would know him when you saw him. I probably know him. Um, he it just came out on Netflix. It was pretty good. I watched it this morning. All right, I want to see Rami, Rami, Rumi's. Remote remote works. Mm. Yusuf. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um gotta watch his too. Yeah, I don't know what this topic is. It's not great, but we might be able to riff on this for okay. a sec. Great. Elevators. Very confusing place. And it's the worst thing in the world. And you don't Did live you in talk a building. About elevators? No, no, no. I'm just th I this was my morning. Was you don't live in a building that has an elevator anymore. Was he on your elevator? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you don't live in a building with an elevator anymore. But I have to get in the elevator all the time, and I live on the fifth floor, so I got to ride all the way down. And it's like, do you talk to the person? I pretend like I'm on my phone, but I'm just not, and I don't want to talk to them. But then I say hi. Sometimes I don't want to seem creepy. And then it's like, it, it people don't know how to get in and out of elevators. It's like the worst version of people comes out when they're getting into elevators. Yeah. And I, I don't understand I it. took the stairs every single day. And I lived in that building for two and a half years. Yeah. I took the stairs. My... my Car was right next to the stairs in the parking garage. I would take the stairs down to the street if I wanted to walk somewhere. Yeah, would not because elevators are weird. Oh, if I could have, if I could have taken the stairs back up to my apartment, I would have. Yeah, there was. I figured oh, yeah, out another the door way. Walks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I figured out another way where I could go and take like a long route around and like take stairs up, yeah. just so I didn't have to walk. Yeah, because people are. It's awkward. Because I say hi to almost everyone. I know. Because I can't help the like. I'm looking at my phone. I feel bad. I, I feel like I'm making someone else feel awkward. Yeah, and this morning... I, I've been I, ignored. I felt like this person... I felt like she did it to me, and it made me feel bad, was she comes again, and I was on the fifth, she was on the third, so the elevator goes down, and I was just ready to come here, and it was like maybe 8.30 when I was leaving, and I just like smiled and said, hi. Mm -hmm. And it felt like she was like, ew. <laughs> you know? Like, what a creepy thing to do. And I, so I was like... 
She just pepper sprays you. <laughs> I just like went to my phone because I'm like, Mom, um, is that you? yeah, no, sorry, I was saying hi to somebody else. Because I was like, dude, what did I do? Like, I wasn't creepy. I just said hi, dude. You know, like it was. No, and, and you I made me you uncomfortable. Were, yeah, it's a, you. You feel awkward saying yeah. something just because someone else doesn't respond the I way park, that you hoped they would. Yeah, and so most people in my building don't self park, right? So I park on the bottom floor, mm. most people get off of the first floor. So every time I get in the elevator first, let's say I press P2, they assume that I'm also going to the first floor. They don't think that I'm going to P2. So they'll get in the elevator and then it'll pass the first floor because they didn't go press the first floor. So then they'll be like, oh, fuck. I, I didn't know we were going all the way down. And I'm like, well, it's not my responsibility to tell Don't you. Me. Look at the fucking numbers. They're right there, you know? <laughs> and I, I can't stand, though, when... <laughs> I can't stand when people ask you, like, you're in the elevator, and it says going up, and somebody goes, you going up? And you're like, hold on. Oh, I don't know, dude. Where are we going? You press the button. That's why I'm on this floor, chief. The elevator stopped here because you... Anyway, not getting into that. <laughs> I think I think we're good. I think we can go right, talk yeah, to Jason. Yeah. I'll save some of these for save tomorrow. Save them for, for next time. Uh, yeah, we got Jason Dolly coming on the pod real quick. Uh, let's, uh, let's. Uh, you know what? We're actually going to talk about elevators in, that epi- in this episode as well. How about that? Elevator to the first floor. I mentioned it very briefly. Actually, I think I said it one time. We actually didn't even explain in the episode what that meant. Should we explain it right now? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We're going to talk about in there the 21st floor. You make a comment about the 21st floor. Anybody who comes on this podcast who either tested for a Disney Channel show or was on a Disney Channel show will know exactly what the 21st floor was because that is in the big building in Burbank where you would test was the 21st floor. And you had to go there all the time for meetings or promos or whatever it was, but you tested there and it was always like a memorable thing that you you went to the 21st floor. You tested, it was the final process before you got yeah. cast. You met you you screen tested, you did chemistry reads with other castmates and other actors. Yeah. And then the next step was going to film. And you would, you would be the, you everybody waited day. in the same waiting room. The amount of people that I met and saw there as far as like other actors on the network. It was like you always were bumping into somebody there. Yeah. It was always a whole thing, but we didn't explain it in the episode, and I realized that. But that's that is what the twenty first floor is. So now Go you guys get insider scoop before the episode even happens. Uh, enjoy. Jason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I banger a weirdo. Ate that's ate lunch with it? somebody yesterday, and the way they were chewing made me stop eating because it was like I disturbing mean, me so a much. Brief demonstration. You know what I mean? This it was would like, be appreciated. Like a dog with peanut butter in the roof of their mouth? Oh, and yeah. And talking. <clears throat> and, you know, like, we have a conversation. It was just like... And I was Man, just, this is when I want to know who it is, but I just know that's so <laughs> inappropriate to ask. Yeah. We can find out in 27 minutes and 35 seconds. Jason, you oh, had lunch with him yeah. yesterday, right? <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, that's, You're like, that's what weird. Do you mean? Weird, weird timing. Who, you had two lunches yesterday? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I think um, that was a good place to start. Hey, yeah. Jason Dolly, thanks so much for joining this sit and chat. Oh, you're welcome. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, what's, what's perpetually known as the worst named show in the history of named anything. Anything that's ever been named, this is the worst. But we're so happy to have you here. Oh, so, I think it's better than Hit the Break. Yeah. It's better than hit the brakes. I, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about when you <laughs> reference that I don't that know. Show. I mean, that sounds like those banned I'm words. With. Yeah, is that going to get gonna bleeped? Bleep, bleep, bleep. Yeah. yeah. Right. Maybe. Um, you, you would actually appreciate the other show title that we came up with about eight episodes in was we didn't ever really put together that both of our moms obviously are named Kim. And somebody okay. goes, You should have named the show Son of a Kim. And it just, it feels, a uh, little it feels like it's a podcast name, which means it means nothing. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 But sit and chat is also like still nothing. It's any podcast. It's any that, podcast. Right. Yeah. But that's kind of, that's it's kind of the vibe irony. is you just like, we're just here talking. We're just here so chatting. Son of a and Kim, so, I would go, what is, what do you, how do you, how do you like, son, maybe that, yeah. but maybe that's the draw. You're like, what is, what's yeah, going I gotta on? Hear and then about you get this. there and you're like, oh my God. Oh, it's just these guys talking. <laughs> it's yeah, just these guys Isn't talking. Isn't that disappointing rather than sit and chat? It's like, oh, these two guys sitting maybe, there talking. Yeah. Well, maybe we're one day. Oh, it's day exactly we're, that. Okay, great. We're talking about know. the way you chew gum or we're talking about the way you chew. Jason Dolly's here. Maybe there's a couple reasons to stay. So, it, can it's I. not for the show name. Can I say one thing? Because we were talking about conspiracies. This is the only thing you got. Yeah, dude, okay, I'm not going to talk to the rest of the podcast. We were talking about conspiracies before you walked in. And uh, that guy over there said something about underground cities and stuff, mm-hmm. you know? And I, I forgot, it like dawned on me while he was talking about that. Do you remember when we went to Scotland and filmed the promo for Brave? Yeah. 
Um, oh, Braveheart. you had the chance to change your fate. <laughs> when we did the promo for Braveheart. No, it was um, two years old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we did the promo for Brave. We did the Underground City Tour. Do you remember that? Yeah, just put the water right on the mic. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Didn't realize just this thing had such cameras too. on the end of You guys it. did an Underground City Tour? Mm -hmm. So Scotland, when the plague came through, so many people died. Oh, yeah. That they were just like, ah, fuck it. Let's build a new one. And just built it on top. Yeah. They literally just left the bodies, buried them. They were like, there's no point in building a graveyard. Just so this that's is a the city's so nice. They built it twice. Nice. Because New York City's so nice. They named it. Twice. Nice. Uh. So anyway, yeah, we did that tour uh -huh. when we that that was that was cool. I totally like forgot that we did that. How long were you guys there for? Like a week and a half. We were we I think we were we were in Edinburgh for like literally one night. Yeah. And we did that like either that night or like the next morning or something. Yeah. And we were at the castle, I think, for like four days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. But then we had to stay in Edinburgh again like before we left. But that but then we didn't like do anything there. No. We just like, you know. Is yeah. that the furthest that you've there. traveled for like w anything work related? Uh for work, yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. that's the farthest and and by far the best. No, work trip yeah. of like imaginable honestly I mean, even like it's a well, promo the only thing that i can make it better is if it was longer Literally. yeah you know, right yeah, yeah. if i if they just left me there and didn't plan my return trip that would have <laughs> yeah, been dude. that would have been the best possible scenario I just, love, you're gonna live on a castle for the rest of your existence oh my god i love right. edinburgh so much there was a moment yeah. when i was there i was like i think i could live here oh yeah like, it is so awesome 100 such a cool city and you guys are doing promos so it's not like you know ex extenuating work no, one? yeah, you're not it's, like it's you're very, not up late at night like going over your lines. You're you just work, like you wake up and say some shit. Six yep. hours, have coffee in yep. Scotland. You yep. look out at the greenery. The you wake up city. and everybody has breakfast. That it's was, like it's, yeah. like, a, it's like a vacation they, kind of. You yeah, know, we but, all get together and have breakfast in the morning and with have haggis and then and yeah. then, ah, then we go do our work and then we have lunch. It's like mm -hmm. very. Bro, our work the, was the, playing the, archery though. Well, that's the thing too. Yeah, it's like either we're exploring this ancient castle, we're doing archery on the ground somewhere. Or uh, you know, I mean that's that's not that's not work. No, it's I, a that's dream. Not a, that's not a job. I think the I castle that we were that. in was six hundred years old. Yeah, like the the, the inner you part was no. So there were two parts. The, the inner part was like really old, like six hundred years old, and then the like the kind of part like that converted to, like that. to like a hotel was like maybe two hundred years old. Yeah. My buddy uh, went to a wedding. At that castle, though. I remember you. Did told I tell me. you that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was like, my friend got married in Scotland. I was like, oh, where at this castle? Like. Dundas. What castle? He's like, I don't know. It's a small castle. Have you heard of Dundas Castle? I was like, yeah, the, I've been to Dundas Castle. What I've seen mean? Dundas Castle. The dumbass castle. Yeah. <laughs> that stupid ass castle. I still have a bottle of scotch that I got from that trip. I haven't finished it. I can't bring myself to. No, yeah, you, can't. you can't. Not until yeah. you go get there. I got to go back. One. Yeah. <laughs> this is when Eric uh, bought you. This is when Eric burst the door and says, We're going. <laughs> no, Eric didn't. Come Eric, on, we're going. Didn't Eric buy you scotch at 20 or something like that? Oh, probably. I think yeah. he got yeah. the birthday wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounds right. Yeah. Um, no, but the Scotland trip, uh, I don't know if you remember this as vividly as I do, but do you remember the morning that we all woke up and everybody had like a weird ghost? Yeah, kind of. I didn't have one, though. So that's why but your it, like, mom did. Remember? My mom apparently did. Yeah, that, that it didn't stick for me. But I was really jealous because I've always wanted to have a ghost, like a ghost experience. But what is it? Do you think it's like a trip advisor ploy? And they're like, all right, cool. We ha we'll give them a good stay. But like their last night here. Yeah. Let's have some That's sort of weird experience. Totally so they like write a, about like a, like a you know a tourist. What's the word I'm looking for? Like it's something that when you when tourists look at a place and they say, "Oh, that's haunted." haunted that's, there's like value go. to that. Yes. Yeah, exactly. sure. So I wouldn't blame them for, for goosing it a little bit. I know? think his. I think your mom's door opened a couple times. Or something yeah, it was like that. something like that. It was like yeah, the door. She like woke up and the door was open, but it was closed when she went to bed. <laughs> that's so yeah. creepy. I just, I, I just imagine like yeah, well, my mom. She said that a ghost opened her door a couple times. Yeah. When I was a kid. Was that a that was a joke about nice. that? Uh, I was yeah. waiting for the punchline. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah. What really... was I didn't see what the what's the punchline? The punchline was a uh, ghost um being uh sensual with my mother. That was oh. the joke. Yeah. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Oh, you got to go farther with that. Like, there's, there's got to be like the, the, the sheets are disturbed or something yeah, like yeah, that. Like, yeah. there's got to there's, there's there was, more oh, to there it. was a sheet. There was. I don't know exactly know what it yeah. is because it wasn't. I gave wasn't it my joke, joke really early. Yeah, Not that funny. It wasn't going to be that funny. That's right. why I gave up on it. So you bail on it. Yeah, I okay. did bail on it. Yeah. Right. Um. Well, we had some yeah, questions. Kind of like for my you. career. Some <laughs> questions for me. <laughs> I think you're going to get okay. some questions that you guys created. Or well, yeah, you know, because the last time we had you on a podcast, we kind of I think we just talked for like three hours. Yeah, it was about that long. For about kind of got to be the worst way to do this. No, no, no. Hang on. I don't want to hit the. I've never seen somebody struggle with water because it's like this is just longer than I thought it was. So like, you got a problem with our mics? I'd say go left hand. You know, I or I'm sorry, right hand. 
I think. Yeah, but it's on the left side. So I got so I have to switch hands. Switch hands. Well, so they, and then yeah. take the because I'm right handed. So take this off and then switch hands again and then it's it's more work yeah, than no, I'm sure. Uh, no, it's is, a lot. Of, is but worth you can't it, take the cap off with your left this is hand. Riveting content. Yeah, the sure. listeners actually, are really uh, yeah. Uh, the, uh, questions. Like questions. Right questions. What do we? I like to think know. that we're like um, the the Seinfeld of podcasts. I was listening to. <laughs> Uh, is that we have a Costanza back there? Costanza, yeah, yeah. I was listening to him actually talk to Howie Mandel. That's Jake. And talk about like <laughs> everything that his character went through is something that Larry David experienced. And I like to think that, you know, we're just talking about ghosts walking in your mom in the hotel room and <laughs> getting free alcohol from Eric Allen Kramer when you're 20 years old. That's that's the thing we do. We just chat. We just that's just my chat. life, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, dude. You know what? Okay, can I tell one funny story about Scotland? You can tell one story. One. All you right. get one of everything. I, <laughs> you already you already said you'd stop yeah. talking. You get one more. Oh, okay, yeah. can I do one more? Yeah. Um, I remember the first day we got there. I don't remember. You know, this is probably something that everybody's experienced at some point in their life, but we went to a grocery store, and I turned the corner in a grocery store, and I remember seeing a girl... That was probably my age at the time. And I remember it was like the most beautiful human being I've ever seen. And I like, do you remember when you were that young and you just f fell in love with the person? Mm -hmm. You were like, yeah. I'm going to marry that person. Probably. Right. That, I still remember this girl's face to this day. Like, wow. and I, 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 once we started talking about Scotland, that memory popped up of like that exact person. And she said something to me because I think she recognized us. And like, I can remember her little Scottish accent too. And it, it was tripping me out when we were just talking about that because I hadn't thought about that. In a she really died time. in a terrible barbershop <laughs> so accident. She was the ghost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 She came yeah. into my mom's Full room. Full circle, well. baby. Yeah, I know, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Jace. Yeah. This time around, we're going to talk about. Who was your first love? Okay. <laughs> Um, the, this time around, we're gonna try to we're gonna interview a little a little more. We're gonna do a okay. little more of an interview, and uh, we want to. I'm learn. so excited. I do want you to answer that question. Though. Well, I do want to talk about first. Jason's well, first we love. mean first love, like first first love. You know, could be could be could have been on a set. You like, grew up on a set. Could have been like a, a co-star, or could have been a. I think someone we should at your just go a little like, deeper. What was your first boner? Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> in the classroom. <laughs> well, I have an answer for that, but I'm not going to share it. I no. haven't had one yeah. yet. I, <laughs> I'm still waiting like, yeah, that. Well, still, uh, <laughs> it's still, <laughs> you're still not sure. Um, first love, you can interpret it that any, any so way you like, want. Like, like first my love. first like crush mm. was 100% Nala from Lion King. Oh, yeah. Wow. 100%. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel that. I was there, too. Mm -hmm. that, that was, was the first movie I saw in movie theater, also. Oh really? Like so really? much like yeah, oh, yeah. What year did that come out? Ninety nine. Ninety four, I think. Oh. I was three. Yeah, none of us were. Or the two. So of us who was your yeah. better time? <laughs> Real life. What's her name? The Lion King character. You just said it. Who? Oh, Nala. What's the, who's your real life Nala after that? Who you're like? Oh my god, I'm gonna find my. Uh, like in like elementary school. Elementary like, school. So do you think yeah. it was at that point that you realized like you were attracted to animals? Or <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, the, the, the next one was a squirrel, and then there was... That was, we're, we're stuck with bunnies, but... Um, uh, I don't know. Furry jokes? It's, yeah, you know, yeah. They're, yeah. They're not really working for me. Yeah. Hey, yeah, you can head out for this next one. Oh, thanks so uh, much. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to we're gonna take it back a little bit, and we're going we're gonna to try to introduce you to the audience, because nobody really knows who you are, so... Especially if they're listening to this I podcast. They're like, who's this yeah, guy? Right? Who's that guy? <laughs> um, what was your first acting gig? What got you into acting? I'm not asking because I already know this information. I'm asking for everybody else. Jake doesn't know. You know? Do you, I don't know. You, 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 you probably know. It was yeah. the AFI film, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it was an AFI thesis film called Chasing Daylight um, where I, I like, was the lead kid and it was about like my best friend like died in this car accident and I like me coping with her, you know, the loss of her. Mm. Uh that was the that was my first that was like eleven years old. I had to like cry and shit. Um, so that was that was it. And then, and then like like a year or two later, I I, I go from a I go from a you know for student film basically to doing a series regular for an ABC sitcom. <laughs> That's common. That's a that's a great uh, transition. Well, kind of, but like, do you think they saw the film and they were like, "This guy, this is it." Well, that we, was my whole audition. I just sent them the movie. <laughs> I guys, I'm not doing anything else. Offer only. Here's my reel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, like, but if you think about that, joke. like somebody starting out, that's not normal. No. You don't. 
you don't just jump to that. I mean, you, you got to do years of, of guest stars and everything else to, but yeah, it was just right place, right time, I guess. Um, we had this what conversation. Was the, what was the ABC show? It was called Complete Savages. How, how long did it run for? Just a year. 19 year? episodes, I think. Yeah. A year and still 19 episodes. That's yeah. This doesn't happen. Anymore. I know. I just, we had this conversation. It. We had a guy on, uh, Karin. He was on an episode of Mighty Med. Yeah, if you could just stay still for the rest of this podcast. Not possible. Cool. Um, yeah. This I'm chair rocks a little bit, which means I'm going to be rocking. Might the be falling time. asleep. Yeah. <laughs> Just look over, he dozes off. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first Just time. In the middle of answering a question. Um, yeah. No, we had a guy on Karin. Um, he was on Mighty Men, and then he went on to do everything. Everything. Ton of stuff, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but he uh, he was telling us the story of like how he kind of got into it. Long story of like just denial, denial, just brutal conversations. Scam, scam. People saying like, you really should never act. Yeah. Like just crazy conversations. Hmm. And we're sitting here just going... Oh my God. God, dude! Like we got so lucky the way, and you had a very similar experience to us. I mean, yeah. all three kind of had the same uh, career in a sense, as far as like just starting young and getting a big job, and that took yeah. it off. You know? Yeah, I, I can't imagine someone telling me I shouldn't act. Like yeah. I've never. You want to try? I'll tell I've you right never, now. Here we go. Well, just try it on for size. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's bad. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. real bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially if you're a kid. Although sometimes if you're a kid, you can just be kind of headstrong in a way that. As you get older, things bounce off. Yeah, yeah you're just like yeah. whatever. Like you, you don't know. But if you're in your mid twenties, even early twenties, you're like, oh shit. I guess I'm bad. Maybe I'm terrible at everything. Isn't that crazy though? That yeah. you have that confidence as a kid, and then you have to find it for the rest of your life. I mean, life? that was that was you my whole twenties. Was like from eleven to like twenty two till Charlie was done. I was fine. Like I didn't. I had no. You're gonna work the rest of your life, right? Well, I had yeah. no anxiety. I had no you know, doubts. Yeah. And then good luck Charlie was over. And then suddenly it was like, Oh, I'm not like working a ton right away. And then it was like, Oh my God, wait, do I, can I book a job again? Mm -hmm. Like what, uh, am I good at this? Uh, do I even want to do this? Yeah. Um, how do I do this? I mean, yeah. kid, you just sort of like, you fly by the seat of your pants. Things you just do whatever. You. Yeah. 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 I think it's happened to me. Right. I'm like, Oh, do I have to, like, what do I do? How do I make that stuff happen to me again? I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would get crazy anxiety attacks all the time. I mean, I still get anxious for auditions, but like I remember totally. I was doing one. I was like 25. I was in the casting office. Uh, it was like for, it was like a guest star for the show Grimm years ago. <laughs> mm. And I'm standing there across from the, the you know casting story? director. And they're, yeah. they're, they're looking at me and I'm saying my thing. And I'm looking down at my script, my sides. My whole paper <laughs> is shaking because my body is shaking from head to toe because I'm having a fucking panic attack in the middle of the audition. Oh so I was like, okay, I gotta... I don't know what I gotta do, but I, something's gotta change here. You're laughing because... <laughs> Does he like, know this story? I don't no, think so. I don't know why that I... Uh, you're gonna say, like, you shake your pants. I thought you were gonna say you're gonna throw up. I, I did. I thought oh, you were gonna I've say, like, too. my I face was... I just... <laughs> oh, no, I haven't... I didn't, I've never shit. thrown up, but I have... I... I Believed I was going to. I did this. Uh, I was uh, a speaker at the. Uh, it was the Memorial Day uh, concert in D.C. Have I told you this story? I'm just picturing you in a room. <laughs> <laughs> you're just standing there reading your lines, and you're just. It's, just, it's all oh God, coming okay. out. I'm and uh, yeah, I'm no. So I did. I did this Memorial Day concert, and the whole thing was I was sort of portraying one of the kids of a uh, fallen soldier and like telling their story as an actor. Mm. Uh, so I had a teleprompter and stuff and we'd like rehearsed it, but I like remember being backstage and I walk out for the thing. I can see the Capitol building in front of me. Like that's where we're at. We're in DC. When was this? This was, uh, well, it was Memorial day, but it was probably, <laughs> of course <laughs> yes. it was, uh, uh, I don't know. It's probably 2015. Yeah, I remember you going and doing 2014? it. 2014. This is why it was a while ago, and you did it while we were on Mighty Bad. I remember that. Oh, maybe it was did you do it with that. Stephanie Scott or no? I did. Yes. Okay. That's, what That's it was. so yeah. crazy. Yes. I just yeah. heard about this story for the first time. My manager was like, "She, did, I saw her performance. It was amazing. She did this whole speech, whatever." And yeah. they, he was like, yeah. "Oh, it was great. Like the whole cast did an amazing job." And he was like, "It was very moving." Right. It's funny that you. I, I, I remember just remember we had a conversation time. about it on Mighty Bad because they went we did? and did it together. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, so I'm next to her, and literally, yeah, Capitol building, thousands of people here, and I know there's like a, like a million or something watching, and I'm like, I have a teleprompter, I know what I'm gonna say, but I like was like convinced I was gonna throw up, like in front of like 
on the Capitol building, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it was going to go that far. Uh, so, yeah, that's just, uh, was, that's anxiety for you. Was that it's, a, like, your, do you feel like that was like the most nervous you've ever been while doing a project or anything? Yeah. Like well, yeah. But then that, like, that thing would then happen on set other places. Really? Like, I would get that nervous when they would call action. Well, mm. it became a it, it became a recurring thing that I had to kind of work through, and sometimes it still creeps up, but it's a lot lot better now. Yeah, well, you've had time to like sit with it and work it out, and think yeah, about and like it. gain ownership of my craft in a way that yeah. I hadn't before. It's so, hard. I mean, it does it. Yeah. It makes you th rethink your entire career, especially if you yep. don't have like, you know, if you get off Charlie and you start working like once every three months, it's like okay, it creeps back in, but then like no, you're working it was less like than it. that. Yeah, it was like. I did, a, I did a movie right away, and then it was like nothing for a year. Yeah. Then it was a guest star, and then it was nothing, nothing for like, yeah, five years, six. I don't remember. I mean, I don't have the timetable in my brain right now. But it was, it was, it was a shocking shift from oh, if I audition for things, I get work. To I'm auditioning all the time, and I'm not working. Yeah, yeah, because you're like what? Like my brain wasn't wasn't the, ready for that. Like I, I wasn't the, primed for that that input. You know. Right, and, and the p thing is, though, is that people still want to see you. People still want to see you it, audition and, and see your tapes. I and, think so, yeah. Like, it seems like it. But. Right, and I, I think that's the tough thing is that you have to relearn your love. I mean, we've talked about this before, but you have to relearn your, your love and your dedication for the craft and sitting there with material and appreciating your own work and having the confidence to put it up on tape and then in front of someone in a mm -hmm. room on set. Um, yep. I feel like it changes every year. And it, like, even when you're not working, even if you are working, I think your appreciation and your view on the job is constantly changed. But it's it's tough to go from being on a set and being appreciated every single day and being like, oh, you're doing a great job. This is so funny. We have a laugh track. Everyone's having a good time to like, yep. this is something that you're going to have to dedicate your life to and take seriously every day for the rest of your life. Especially when you're a kid. Especially like, when you're a kid. And you don't really realize what a gift it is to be in that position. No. And how hard it is to get it back if you lose it. Like, and if, it's just, yeah. if that's what you've known for half your life. Yeah, and my brain was just, I, I, that's just what I knew. It was yeah. just all I knew. And suddenly it's like, oh, that is, you know, crumbling completely. And I have to completely reevaluate everything I thought I knew to be true. Mm -hmm. um, but I really value that time. I really think that, you know, uh, on the other, on the tail end of it, for the most part, I would say, um, I'm, a, I'm a better person, a better actor for it, without question. I mean, that's, it hasn't changed what I want to do. No. It doesn't mean that I don't want to be an actor anymore. Just you've experienced. I've just gone through that, and yeah. and now I think I, when the work comes again, I will never, ever take it for take granted. for granted. Yeah, the way that I did, and it, it's less take it for granted. It's more just like didn't know. It didn't know. Yeah, I had no idea. I, and I, how could I do anything other than take it for granted? Essentially, right? Uh, totally. Yeah. yeah. I, I think about it all the time, and uh, I guess uh, you would understand this because we were on the same show. But it's like it's double C. Uh, it's it's crazy to think that we were on a TV show and this is just how, like how I feel. <clears throat> we did a TV show that was one of the one of the top TV shows on television at the time, you know? And that's like Apparently. such a crazy thing to think about like to do that today. When I think about that I'm like, wow, that would be unbelievable to do that, but it's a weird thing to think that like we actually did that at one point. So then you come off of that and you're kind of like well, I guess I didn't realize how um, like amazing and rare that is, you know? How could you? Because you don't know. Because and it was what you did. Yeah. You just it was didn't just know. what you, you know. And so you also have like, uh, every TV show is like this. How many times do people come up to you on sets and go, oh, this is the best thing we've done on this network. You guys are, we're going to have you work in all the time. Like you're going to go on and do this next thing. And you're like, yeah, dude, I think I'm never, I'm never going to stop working, you know? Mm -hmm. And then it's like the show ends and they're like, all right, see ya. You know, it's like this like strange feeling of like, there's this like, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but you just assume you're always going to work mm -hmm. and you assume life is always going to be like this. But it, like, the, it's rare to ever have that, you yep. know? So I think that the time after the fact of, like, not working for all of us is, like, that's where real growth comes because yep. you go, oh, the, I got to do this amazing thing. 100%. And then you're right because the next time you do it, you're going to go, this is this is incredible. Yep. And I think Eric always had that perspective. I think He seemed to. Yeah. He, yeah. I think Eric always knew. He'd been that, around the block. He'd done shows before. It wasn't yeah. his first rodeo and lee too i think they yeah. both like knew like this is rare right this is a yeah, rare they, thing yeah, they were telling us constantly how how rare this situation we had was how yeah, lucky like, we were like, we were yeah. like i it's guess just life. i mean yeah. you know it's I remember, cool i remember it is great you know? i think you and i were talking about sitcoms one time and wanting to go do other things after the show ended that weren't sitcom um and eric 
told us it was i think he, i can't remember what he said he was like after you go do other things you guys will realize that four camera sitcom is the best job in the i remember world. that yeah. i remember yeah. i don't remember exactly what he said or like yeah. but i remember that interaction and i remember sure. thinking like i don't know i mean i'd like to go do yeah. other things now i would genuinely yeah talking about it yeah yeah that's it's the, the best yeah. job I mean, in it's, the world. it's the best it's the closest thing to like a regular job yep. that you can get and it's not a regular job at all no. but uh yeah the hours are good the schedules you're in you know, sweats from monday yeah, to wednesday dude, yeah you know it's i think the only thing better is voiceover but i'm not sure that that would be as fun or fun in the same way i think it'd I mean, be awesome to have a show and then also be able to go home and do the voiceover gig, yeah yeah you know like yeah. like a will arnett kind of setup where you know you just have a studio in your house listen yeah is that how he does it oh yeah probably yeah dude most of those guys don't leave their house anymore to yeah. do voiceover like seriously well, it's all just i know for especially like post covid like you kind of had to during that and now you kind of have yeah. your own setup so why would why i go would you in? Need to? Yeah. as long as the quality doesn't change you know i know someone who used to do the commercials or i guess it was a friend of a friend he would like in the middle of a trip or something he'd be like hey guys i have to go into a closet and record this voiceover for a commercial and that's going to pay my rent for the next three months <laughs> yeah and that I mean, it would take him like half an hour yeah to sit there go send it to the person have him send it back notes that is and it goes on very, very rare. Very rare these days. It was less rare. I don't know about less rare, but either way, that's just a. Did you do a crazy. lot of voiceover? No, I didn't do a lot of voiceover. I didn't do a lot of commercials. Uh, I did. A lot I just of never. I never booked commercials. I booked one. I booked a Duracell commercial. You were working it? on. But you started doing theatrical. television, yeah. yeah, before. Well, yeah, but I would also go on commercial auditions. I mean, I I would do both. It was until I got the Savages thing yeah. that I would kind of was kind of doing both. Um, and I just wouldn't. I wouldn't. Couldn't book, couldn't book commercials. So let's talk traje trajectory. Let's talk timeline here. So you went from Complete Savages, then that strung you into what? Well, you what go from there? I want to go... Oh yeah, I was going to say, what brought you to the 21st floor? But let me take it back real quick uh, before yeah. I answer that. What, what great sentence. Oh, yeah. Right? That was cool. That nobody yeah. else... People know what that is. No one's else going to know. Do people know? Okay, well, um, we'll know eventually. Maybe. Yeah. Um, what, what made you want to do the AFI? And what made you want to get into acting? Was it just the entertainment side of it? Was it something you watched? Was it, it was, a feeling? It was Star Wars. What? Star Wars, hundred percent, yeah, really. We were watching Star Wars as a kid and watching, Which one? uh, well, the uh, uh, the original ones, the ones yeah. that Mark, I mean, Mark Hamill was like the person I saw, and I was like, oh, I could, I could do that, yeah, yeah. like I could do, I could swing a sword around and, mm -hmm. and cut people up and whatever, like that's that's what <laughs> that's what, that's I, what I that's what I started with, yeah. Um, it's not the acting. I want to kill a bunch yeah. of people. <laughs> 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 right. uh, like, Judy, <laughs> and uh, now I'm here. Uh, so, and then it was. Um, I saw the Abbott and Costello bit, uh, the Who's on First routine. Yep. And I did that with my brother. In, I was in fourth grade. And we did it for our school talent show. That was like my first performance of any kind. And after doing that, I was like, oh, this is fun. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm into this. Yeah. Uh, and then I just begged and begged and begged my mom, like, let's do it. I want to do it. And that was the whole thing. She was like, I'm not gonna do it unless you, you do it. Yeah. Like need to. Yeah. If you convince me that you're like all in, I'm game. <laughs> and then for the for the rest of the time that she was sort of involved, it was always if you want to be done, you say the word and we're done. Doesn't matter in the middle of good luck, Charlie. I could have been like, I'm done. See ya. Done. Yeah. No problem. We have uh, the same mom. Yeah. 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 Well, could we be like their best friends. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So it was yeah. it basically you guiding the entire way. You're, you're steering the ship. You mm -hmm. said, I want to do this, and that's what brought you to every project that you ever did. Well, my desire is what sort of started it, and then she I mean, she literally brought me to the project. You know, she would yeah, drive me to the course, auditions, yes. she, right? But, she facilitated a little but, bit. Yeah, but, but it was I mean, it was, desire, yeah. I had to convince her and get her on board, and once she was, she was completely on board, and it was, you know, it was great. So I'm curious your take on this, too, because we also grew up 10 minutes away from each other, which is bizarrely, yeah. weirdly ironic. Yeah. But I've said this on this show a thousand times. I think we had the same situation with our mom driving us to work. D genuinely, I believe if, if my family lived an hour and a half north, like if we lived mm. up in San Luis Obispo, I don't think I would be an actor today. I think I was fortunate enough that my older sisters were already in like high school, middle school, so they were gone for the day, and my mom just was looking after me. And the drive to L.A. was just accessible enough for us to go do mm. these auditions that I don't know... I would have had to come to that realization of wanting to do it as a grown adult. And I don't know if I would have. I don't know where it would have led me. But I know that, like, I got lucky in the sense that I was close enough to L.A. and my mom was willing to help me get there, you know? Yeah, it's a good, it's an interesting question because part of why, part of why she may have said yes, and this is obviously, 
we're speaking on behalf of somebody who isn't here, but no, let's call her right now. You know, <laughs> it may very well have had to do with the fact that it wouldn't mean that I had to leave the family behind, leave my friends behind. You know, it was sort of like we can do this thing yeah. as a hobby, for lack of a better word. And, you know, you can maintain your sense of home, your sense of identity, your sense of your, your friend groups, that, that community, you know, that doesn't go away uh, to just sort of try this out. And then if it goes well, then it's like, okay, well, if you got to be in, you know, Salt Lake City for six months because that's what you booked, you booked the job, great, you know, good, we'll go do it, we'll make it work. So I think that that if I didn't live as close to L.A. as I did, it might have taken more time to convince my mom it's to worth it. do it. Um, but I think that eventually, either way, my persistence, because I would have been as just as persistent as I was, even more if I needed to be, that would have eventually convinced her, you know, whether it was at 11 or 13 or 15 or whatever. Um, I think it still would have happened. It just would have taken more time, is my yeah. assessment. But, yeah. I yeah, I mean, I was in Indiana, and the only reason that it worked for me is because my both my parents were working. So, um, and my aunt already lived out here. So I, I oh. think I think the uh, the closeness to the industry in the city is definitely helpful. Yeah, I, I went with that though. Did you have to convince your grandma, or what was that? Um, I had to convince my mom to take classes, and then yeah, my grandma, my mom was like, I can't go out there with him, and she was already yeah, retired, I don't, so I don't she even was like, like him, so. she's like, I don't even see him. <laughs> um, he's my least favorite. Uh, but my grandma was like, Oh, I'm retired. We'll go out there and see what happens. But I mean, it is it is dumb luck though. At that age, I oh think, yeah, I think it's you wanting to do it. Me, I, I like the attention. I think you guys liked the performing and the entertaining, entertaining, entertaining. Um, mm -hmm. and that I think propelled. We've talked about it a bunch, but it propels you past all of the competition that has their mom pushing them to go them. into the room. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. So absolutely. So okay, so we we finish uh, complete savages, mm -hmm. nineteen episodes. Which, it, it, that's a small little chunk for a sitcom, you know? Mm. Was it, what would, what, did you ever get a reason on why that show ended? Or what was it? Um, I don't remember. Uh, I remember we, we found out, I think, you know, we had two or three episodes left uh, on the order. And we, like, blew the budget on the very last one and, like, <laughs> did this, like, it was like there was some hot tub party and like the hot tub had to like explode at a certain point. And I remember they were just saying, this is just, we're just blowing the budget. Basically. They just yeah. did like the biggest possible episode. Jump the shark. Um, you're right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I, yeah, I don't, I think, I mean, it, you know, with, with shows, there's always a thousand different reasons. There's politic political reasons, you know, inside the, the network there's, um, you know, what, what day we were, I don't remember what day we were on. I think we're on Fridays actually, which is kind of a tough, tough mm. time, tough, tough time slot. Yeah. Cause we were, we were part of TGIF, I think back when ABC was doing TGIF. What other shows uh, were on at the time? Do you remember? Hope and Faith, I think oh, was yeah, I on. Oh one. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the only one I remember. Who was that show? It was, uh, it was, um, Kelly Ripa and, yeah. uh, what's her name? Faith? Or did Kelly play Faith? That was like Pushing Daisies era too, wasn't it? Was I that think ABC? so. Pushing Daisies was uh, yeah. ABC, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, th that. I, don't, I don't remember what else was so on. So then... Better off Ted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that so show ends, we go on to Saving Show. What guy Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was that was next. Which I was, one? I turned 14. You did a movie called Saving Shiloh. I did a, yeah, um, the third in the Shiloh trilogy. Uh which was about a, a boy and this dog, basically. Um, I think I, I was that a book. It was a book. Yeah, it was okay. A book. I, I, I can I read see that the and, cover now. I can too. Yeah. It's like a dog in a pasture mm -hmm. and a boy like looking over, but like it's yeah. more of like I can see I was, him sitting next to the dog on the cover oh. of the book, and they both uh, have yeah, the, yeah. they have the same hair. Is actually <laughs> wow, what I yeah. remember vividly. Good one. Okay, yeah. so. Get us to the twenty-first floor. Yeah, what what's got you pressing the elevator well, the, button? The the thing about that was uh, that's the most the most exciting story of my career so far is the story of how I do my first Disney job mm. because I I read for this movie called Read It and Weep and I I you know got really close and that they went a different way and so you know I'm I'm planning to go on my uh, my high school at the time was doing a, a trip to Washington D.C. My brother had gone at, the, gone at the year before, and he was talking all about it, said it was this great thing, and everybody was looking forward to it, getting ready for it. I was supposed to leave, I think I was supposed to leave like 
Tuesday or maybe even Monday of the next week. It's like Friday night. And I get a call from Judy Taylor, who is mm. the who was the senior vice president of casting, I believe. Um, I don't remember her exact, her exact title, but she was, you know, that, that was something. definitely God, one of the head honchos, if not the head honcho as far as casting goes. And uh, turns out the guy they booked came down with acute appendicitis and had to drop out. And she's like, we need you on a plane like tomorrow. Can you do it? And I didn't say yes right away. I mean, I didn't like, I thought about it for maybe an hour or two, but it was really like, I was weighing this, this, this possibility, these, these, these two competing, you know, lives that could, could have resulted from this decision. And one was like, yeah, this nice time with my friends. But the other was like, this is a chance to do this thing that I've been, that I've been wanting to do. I mean, this is yeah. like, this is my, this is my job. Like, this is, this is what I want to do. So it was like, it wasn't really a decision. It was just some some time had to pass, and I kind of had to like come to it. But I was never gonna not say yes. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, it was literally like the next morning. I'm packing up and heading to the airport. And did you going test to for it and didn't get it, or did you? I don't remember. I don't think so. I think I just read a couple times and then didn't hear. I don't really remember that part of it. Um. But so then you go do you know, read and weep. Was that min minimum was. Next minimum was, was after, yeah. Minimum and was Corey after, after. After Corey, no, Corey was next. Oh, Corey was next. Yeah. So that movie, we didn't weep happens, and then like the next, you know, I don't remember how how long it was, but the next thing I go in for is Corey in the house, uh, and you know, I read for it and I went through the whole rig and roll, but I was also kind of like, you know, they know me at this point, yeah, or at least to a to a certain degree. Um, so then I I do that, and then and then, yeah, from there it's, you know. It's here. Go to this movie. Okay. Yeah. Hey, did, we go, we're going to get you on a series. All right. What is it? Good luck, Charlie. Okay, great. When Let's did go you to this movie. Like, Pete? Jesus. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, I believe, was either either right after or it was around the writer's strike of mm. 2008. I don't remember if it was during or after. I honestly have no idea. So, so kind of in the midst of Corey in the house? It was, it was around the time... Uh, because we shut down production for a little while, uh, and it was, and then there was the strike, and then I think the movie happened either during the strike or right after the strike, because we, then, then we came back, and, but only for a couple episodes. Yeah. So it was a, it was a weird, it was a weird time. Yeah. What, then I remember I seeing along. advertisements uh -huh. for that. And your life was changed forever. Well, yeah. Do you know the yeah. story of how Jason and I met? Was it? In the casting office of nope, nope. Mm -mm. on set, uh -uh. nope. Do you not know how we met? Seriously, no. Should we tell the world? I remember seeing hatching. I think Pete. people have people never heard this story. I don't know, man. I feel like we probably have talked about it. I would, I would think it would have come up at some point. But. Have you gone Jason, to a cooking show yet? I yeah. Have, yeah. Jason oh, Dolly wow. came. It was a big announcement at my elementary school in Thousand Oaks that Jason Dolly was coming to read a book for oh, the I school. Think I remember my that. first time reading a book. <laughs> they said it's a big, big deal. Big deal for me to Jason's, like, Jason's gonna, gonna try. finally Jason try to read a book. Yeah. It's finally literate. And so he he <laughs> comes to the school, reads a book, and they were at they did a big Q and A with him after the fact, and then they did like you had to like put your name in a hat to get drawn like one person per classroom got like a cl like a question for him, and I didn't have it. But at the end they did like all right, we got time for a few more. We'll just do some random questions. And I raised my hand, and I had been doing like commercials at this point, so the principal knew that I used to leave all the time to go do these auditions and commercials like that. So he goes, oh, this will be good. It's like an actor-on-actor actor question. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> Were his exact <laughs> words. Also, I'm nine. So yeah. it's not like, what was he expecting? I'm like, so when you're getting into character, yeah. like, what's no, your you, process <laughs> like? <laughs> For some reason, I'm always Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. You, uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. wow. Adler, yeah. what do wow. we got? Yeah. Um, I asked him, I, I, my buddy dared me to do it. My buddy Connor dared me to do it. They ask you if you had a girlfriend. That was oh, dude, it was so sick at the time. He was like revolutionary. Oh, dude, did you ask this question? I yeah. was like, oh, you know, this is gonna be. A do you have a girlfriend? Yeah. 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 Did you ask him? I asked him, and then he didn't answer. He said, "I won't answer." Because I, because I was trained for whatever reason to like not yeah. answer that. Like you weren't supposed to at the time. You like weren't supposed to answer that. Yeah, and that one way or the other, whether you had one or not, you were just supposed <laughs> to say, you just was just keep no. it vague. Yeah, like, uh, it's just my personal life, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't but then right. so, yeah. I mean, genuinely, probably five months later, 
It was mm-hmm. it was not that long. Yeah, yeah it was probably yeah. A I'm on of the twenty first floor. Yeah. At Disney, you walk and I up walked to him. up to him. Hey, like, where's your girlfriend? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like how about you answer my fucking it's question, dude? Shit. Oh, yeah, I pulled God. a gun on him, and I was like, <laughs> answer it, <laughs> no, dude. And you yeah. robbed him. I started crying. No, <laughs> I don't have one. I don't have one. Um, yeah, but so that that was like the first time we met. I, did, I think yeah. I remember and you then saying that. I walked up to him and said that on on the twenty first floor. My mom yeah. was like, "You got to go tell him." And I was like, "I really don't want it." You get a cigarette in your mouth. You're like, yeah, "Hey, dude, I saw you in my school." You came to my school. Yeah, we've met before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the like the weird Bronx part of Thousand yeah. Oaks. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. So then you're on Good Luck Charlie. Then we do. Let's yeah. talk about the Good Luck Charlie movie for a second. Do we have to? <laughs> let's talk about filming in Salt Lake. I think for a second. honestly that was a great. I think Eric talked about it for like probably 20 minutes when we had him on, and he was yeah. so he loved. He was it like, was oh so man, fun, I finally man. found my bar at the end of the at the end of the shoot. I was so bummed that it took me five weeks, but I finally I found my watering hole. Only yeah. bummer about that film is that you and me were not grown adults to be able to just go mess around yeah. with Eric around. You guys got the paintball though. Come on. So wow, much. Yeah, yeah. We played was so much pretty great. And yeah. Eric was so bad at paintball. Oh, yeah, and we would just great. light him up. I mean, he's, oh. he's, the, he's the biggest target. Like, <laughs> he's, 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 he's bigger than most of the covers in the, you know, in the <laughs> thing. I'm like, he's just t- he's a huge guy, We're man. Like, he's right there, dude. Yeah. Didn't right. stand a chance. Dude, we would we would leave that place welted up though. You guys would. We uh we had so much fun filming that movie. No, dude. We had so much fun because we had these like massive rooms too oh, and we would just God. hang out like watch movies all the oh, time because we yeah. we were barely in the <laughs> film dude the yeah. like we were barely in there i, I mean yeah. it was a rarity that we worked we yeah. just messed around the whole time we just yeah. got paid to be in utah and that was so much fun i don't even remember the movie but like i don't remember yeah. filming the movie I think there's definitely a happy medium between yeah. those two. Like, you want to be a big part of the movie, but also being on location and having your room paid for and you get per diem to just go out and fuck around oh, four days of the five yeah. days of a week that you're off. You're like, it's a give man. and take, you know, because it's 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 a nice position of power to sort of be the lead, yeah. you know, the the person, you know, it's it's but it's a lot of responsibility. I remember, it's a totally a lot, different a lot of work, a lot of, it, Yes. Yeah. Very I much did so. a, you're more like the leader of the thing, you know, not in like a, you know, not don't don't don't. Uh, I don't mean that to sound like actors like run shit, but no. uh, but, but I mean, but there's a responsibility to like yeah. you're on set every day, and if you're not good, the movie's probably not going to be. Yeah, good. it's writing yeah. on you, and it's it's crazy that yeah. like one person has. I mean, well, not one person. Everybody has a you know contributes, but it's like yeah, but you're the right, responsibility man. is. is I, I would feel very different now. Pants on fire was the first time that I ever like I was in every single scene because even yeah. when we were doing Mighty Med, you and I usually split time. Like it was kind Split of time, same storyline. There'd be a B storyline. Yeah, even but if it we was never in. like it wasn't no. like one of us was in every single scene. We would hmm. still have enough time to do school during the yeah. week. Pants yeah, on so. Fire was the first time I was in every single scene, and we filmed it in the summer, so I wasn't in school. And I just remember being so like I remember being fifteen and jealous of like the other kids that were in the movie because they got to just go fuck around Vancouver. Yeah, right. And I just I was in every single scene, so I had yeah. no time, and it was like. Sometimes six day work weeks, so it was yeah. just like I didn't have any time to do anything. Yeah, and like, but at the same time, it's like well, that's pretty cool. Literally everybody else in the industry that's working on your film, yeah, is working every single day. Mm-hmm. Is there for because every they grip, cover every everything? Like, oh. Hair and makeup covers hair, everything. Hair, hair they have yeah, complaining like, oh, I'm not. I mean, every scene, it's like, yeah, everybody's there all the, all the time. time. And like, also like, big calm whoop. down. You're in, exactly. you're in every scene yeah. of a movie. <laughs> oh. Yeah, right. Oh, you're oh. the lead. Oh, you're the big. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. I know. Wow. But at the oh, time, you have to go home after you're but done working. You don't have to close kid, up. Though. Like the way you look at it as a kid is, oh, they get to go have fun. I'm stuck here at work. I've been trying to think about it. Like, I don't know how, you know, God willing, the next time I do like something like that where I'm in every single scene. It like, I don't know how I would have worked out in that schedule. I thought about that too. Because I'm like, dude, I, I would legitimately you would have to do the Mark Wahlberg schedule because mm-hmm. like, I don't know yeah. how else you could oh, wait, do hold it. Hold on, work like physically work out. Physically work out because I'm like, I was getting. I was having. Like, he was saying. Ye- oh yeah, I thought you meant like worked out, like worked out. And you yeah. can what do, do you it. You work out. out. Yeah, yeah work I know. Out. I'm just saying, like, you're working long days on those sets. You know, twelve hour days. Yeah, yeah, dude, it's fine to hard the gym. Find uh, no, I mean, I mean, I'm saying like, hard to find the gym. Around. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, you are working twelve hour days. You just have to, you know, twelve hour take days a short plus lunch. the commute. You know, like commute? yeah, they usually you're yep. usually driving to set for 20, 30 minutes, and then on top of it, you're like, when, when you're done filming, you want to go to bed. Yeah, like it and is you want to be responsible and you want to make sure you get rest for the next day. You know, you don't want to push yeah. yourself and be tired. 
the next day and not be able to like push as much as you want, you know, because you worked out <laughs> that, that morning or that I, night or whatever. I find when I'm you know. working and I'm filming, I lose weight because I'm not eating. <sighs> I'm just like on the go. Mm. I am so the opposite. Yeah, because you're a snacker. Yeah, there's mm. a craft, craft service. service oh there. My yeah, God. you're totally a snacker. I'm going to destroy, especially, I mean, like the last two shows that I did, I was, when I was on set, I was on set the entire day. And if there was a scene without me, I would still be there. Like, I couldn't go home. Um, so I'd just be hanging around. Like, I'd be there five days a week. I'd be there every day, 12 hours a day. I'm like, all right, well, I have two hours off. Yeah. What do I do? I'm going to go to the craft service table. I'm going <laughs> to see what's know. going on. Dude, I'm going to go chat it up. I'm going to snack. I've know? never I've never worked with a guy who's eating gummies or something oh, uh, than working with this dude. I mean, yeah. he just would show up like in between takes. I'd be like, where did you get that? Dude? I was like, I left it on the camera. Yeah. <laughs> you know the camera has a little motivation. ring? He would have yeah. like, had, like the little slots like yeah. for the weights yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah. I'd just go put like my little like little snacks on there. <laughs> Always had snacks. Be like, what's snacks, up, Kenny? Bro. All right, here we go. Get my gummy bears. Kenny, <laughs> of all names. Cracks. Kenny. Kenny, you remember Kenny? You remember, remember Kenny? Kenny? Yeah. 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 Kenny yeah. was a cameraman. Kenny. Like, Kenny. That was a funny thing. Good luck, Charlie. Had, like, all the same people on yeah. my If you're out there right now, I realized the other week that he told me, he was like, I went to Peru last week and I had this great experience. And I was like, oh, that's great. And he's like, yeah, I met with this shaman. He was telling me about his ayahuasca experience. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. had no idea what he was talking about. As a 16 year old, I was like, that sounds like a really cool spiritual <laughs> Good awakening. For Good yeah. for you, man. Good for him. He's like, man. yeah, I took DMT. And I was like, well, that sounds like a cool <laughs> chemical or some yeah. shit. Yeah. What's that? What's that? He's like, oh, it's the, the chemical that's released when you die. And yeah. I was like, wow, fascinating. Wow. Anyway, I'm going to Peru next week if you guys <laughs> want to go. <laughs> For no, uh, no reason. Okay, well, so here we are. Now we're at this point in your career. Yeah. What are, what you're are taking like, DMT daily. Yeah, you're right. doing DMT all the time. I'm, I'm training to be a shaman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my that's my. Do you think it's a part of the process to be a shaman? You have to do it a bunch? I would yeah. imagine well, no. What, do what? Like do the drugs? Yeah. Well, it depends on what, what kind of shaman you are. I mean, we're... We're I'd say a sure three white guys talking about how to become a sh like we're this, this <laughs> yeah. is not, no, unwise an unwise conversation. Why I we have a podcast. I think, man. You know, in order to be a, like a Mount Everest Sherpa, you'd have, probably have to climb it a couple times. I don't know if you have to do, do the a couple drugs times. to you be have to be able to lead somebody. Yeah, a couple yeah. times. I, I don't think yeah. that you're <laughs> you're just like I I you're doing the drugs. Though. See what happens. Yeah. They're like, have you done it? I'm like, no, but no, I no, think no, it sounds fun. So anyway, um, we we finished Good Luck Charlie. We do a couple projects. Bing, bang, boom. Here we are. Now you're at this point in your career. What is we're gonna wrap this up here? We're, what is the uh, what is the dream job? What's the dream career looking like? What are the projects you want to do? What is the kind of oh, work yeah, you want to do? Short, do oh yeah, the short. Oh, we should. Talk, yeah. uh, I'll shut talk up for a short. second. Talk about the short, and then we'll get to that question. Yeah. Uh, so the unicorn, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah produced yeah. and starred. That, in it. Yeah. So that was kind of just a we wound up working out in a way that I would never have imagine doing myself and and it was that uh my buddy at the at the acting institute study at was like hey you know i'm uh, i want to direct and i've got all the equipment to do this and the, you know I, i'm just looking for the right script and i happened to have written this for i wrote it for an acting class years before not even really for myself just like as an exp as an, a, a sort of experiment and uh i sent him i was like hey is this something you do you want to do this? And he right, was like, yes, it's perfect. I mean, it was sort of written to be pretty easy to make. It's two people in one location, you know, it's very simple in that regard. Um, and so he was like, yeah, let's do it. And so we got a group of people together, my, my, my girlfriend Mia and, and uh, you know, a couple of people from the Institute, and we made it happen. And it was kind of this, um, you know, this, this, it, it really was born out of this desire to just sort of make something and just rest a credit out of the year 2022 that was yeah. just a really tough year um we just kind of wrapped it up and said you know what we're gonna we're gonna make something um and uh and and we did and it was a it was a pretty pretty good day um nothing really all went in wrong day? all in one day every take was the entire script top to bottom it was like 10 pages wow Every time, like a play, yeah. Every time they say action, start at the beginning and we go all the way to the end. And you know, most of the time, the cameras are. You know, you've been on sick. Most of the time, we're like not even able to see each other because mm -hmm. of the way they're shooting coverage and stuff. Um, but uh, it turned out fabulous. I mean, I'm, I'm 
couldn't be happier with. The, he shot the shit out of that project too. Oh, that was the thing. Like, dude, Visually I, you know, awesome. I have no, I take no credit for that. That was all Chandler and Xavier. They, yeah. they knew what they were doing. They wanted, they knew the sort of, they had, they had their vision for it, and Mia and I had our vision for the, the characters and sort of their, their journey in that story. And uh, yeah, it really, it, it came together into something that I'm, yeah, really, really proud of. We're, we'll, we'll post that sometime. I, Chandler's doing a ton of things so i don't know what i don't know when we'll post that but we'll 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 post that on youtube at some point and then people can you know see it but, yeah um, it, it, like you guys submitted it to festivals and it did it well, went right? through yeah. yeah we got we got into a lot of festivals we got a lot of little laurels to put on the to yeah. put on the poster it always looks you know? good i like it does yeah, yeah i mean that wasn't that, the thing was that wasn't why we did no. it so it was nice to have like a little bit of that uh, validation. Did you, you know? get the laurels because you live in Studio City? Was that Boo. like the thought? Boo. Boo. Because of, I live I live near Laurel Canyon. <laughs> Is that the joke you're trying Boo. to go for it here? Uh, you know, I was, I was yes. really, when you said it, I was really trying to come up with something that was sadly the best thing that uh. came to my brain. So well, anyway, got it. before right. we get you out of here, uh, before that bomb blows up, dream projects, man. What do you what do you want to work on right now? What's the thing you want to do other than anything? I mean, I kind of see the most likely path Obviously of my the, career. the short that we did together or the sitcom mockumentary that we did at yeah, LA yeah. Center. That's right. the dream. That right? well, yeah. sure. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. that's the that's that's the dream now. <laughs> yeah, yeah now you said it. <laughs> uh, I I kind of think the most likely version is the sort of Chris Pratt story mm -hmm. where not necessarily that I'm like a guest star that becomes a series regular, but sort of I, I do something in comedy, likely, hopefully a sitcom of some kind, uh, and then you know from there I kind of go off and do yeah, even maybe like a you know McConaughey style Dallas Buyers Club, you know mm -hmm. something like that, that then so you do do the comedy because that's what people know you for and that's what they sort of expect to see. And then you find something in the downtime that makes them go, oh, wait, he's like a legitimate serious yeah. actor. Okay, great. And then from there, it's, you know, that it's, is, it's whatever you want to do. got to play the game the before you can change the game. Yeah, too. that's what I comedy. expect. I mean, you know, it, it, you never know. And there's only so much you can do to kind of control that as an actor. But that's what I think is the most. most. And then from there, yeah, I mean, I to, to, to have a career like, you know, Christian Bale's or... Gary Oldman's where you can kind of just do anything yeah. and be in anything and they yeah. can call you up and be like, hey, play, play this. Cool. Great. Like that's, that's, that's cool. you know, yeah, that's a good dream. Great. That's, that's the dream. dream. Yeah. Yeah. That's such but, a better dream too than like, you know, just, I just want to be the lead of this. And I, this. I, think like, this. I think that will come, but it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's more about, I just want to cool project. I want too. to, I want to, every project I get, I want to do my absolute best work and elevate the thing as much as I can with my craft, yeah. and that's what I care about. If it's the, if it's a good project and I want to do it, then I give it my all and I elevate it as much as I can. You want to be pr proud of the project and the work, but you, you, you can in. only be so proud. I mean, th there's only so much you can do about the project. You want you, right. you got to pick the project based on what you, you think it's going to be good. You think it's going to be good people working with. That's really it. You got to think yeah. about who you're working with, because the project can go through so many, you know evolutions and changes and things that are, that are beyond your control. Totally. So you got to pick good people, people you think are going to be good to be good to work with. And then you got to do your best work and be proud of your work. Yeah. What happens after the, you know, how the project turns out, not, you, you can't hold any stake in that. It's just got to, it is what it is because you're not in control of it. That's why I, I never you know? understood like the, I want to win an Oscar. It's like, well, don't you just want to do work and then if the Oscar I mean, comes, it's great. Right, that's, it's, yeah. it has to just be a byproduct of doing the good work and you yeah. have to want to do the work in order for that even to be a possibility. You can't say, oh, I want to win an Oscar because, well, how do you do that? Well, and also, and like, you do that by doing good work and you exactly. do good work yeah. by with that. showing up every day and practicing when yeah. you're not working and, you know, stretching your instrument and growing every chance you get. I mean, that's that's how you that's how you win the Oscar. Because you think... don't win the Oscar by doing the great work. You do the, you win the Oscar is like Michael Phelps said. He didn't win the gold medal by swimming in that pond or pond. He didn't but win the gold medal by swimming that lap or whatever it was. He won the gold medal by showing up at four a.m. You know, yeah. every day for yeah. the past. It's the ritual that gets you the the big success. It's not the event itself. Well, and it, also too, there's dedication. There's never mm -hmm. been a uh, like an Oscar winning performance like the for best actor in a movie that everybody is like that movie's dog shit like we're not even going to put that movie like that's the other thing it's like a lot of good things have to happen oh, yeah. you know it's got there's got to be a good script there's got to be good like a lot of it, 
look at every single film that was not like best actor that was nominated this year, best actress. Like the the films were also nominated for other things. And how you can know? you you can't control you can't that control as an actor. You can't no. control what you get picked for. You gotta or give what that great performance in a great movie. You gotta give the great performance in everything you do. Yeah. As if it's going to be considered that, for an Oscar. Yeah. As yeah. if it's and not less that and more that like it's is it your best work? That's what's most important. Like who cares if you win an Oscar? Like, if you do your best work, you can yeah. be proud. Be of proud. It. And, yeah. and you should be. too. Like people know there's certain films that are like kind of Oscar buzz just from like the script, dude. Like yeah. especially if you're doing like a let's say you're in Scorsese's film. Right. And you do a banger job, there's a world you're probably gonna sure. get nominated. Yeah. You right. know, like everything that Christopher Nolan. If you do a great job, odds are good he's going to have that film at the Oscars. Right. So, you know, you're in yeah, the spot. Especially now. That also going to be a night. Do you hear that? It's unreal. Well, yeah. I literally yeah. said, I think six months ago to somebody, how is that man not knighted? I, I've been wondering. Guy. Like, is he really not? Like, seriously? I think I said it on this podcast. <clears throat> podcast. Okay. Yeah. It kind of goes back to what he's saying, though. Like, Martin Scorsese takes every single piece and particle of his script seriously. And that's yep. why it's going to be considered for every Oscar yep. cycle. Absolutely. Yep. So. Well, I can't wait to see you at the Oscars. I mean, and by the way, we'll this, see. We're we're yeah. announcing uh, he's nominated for next year's Oscars. They haven't actually we have nominated. They haven't said any of the categories. The, category, the movie, the movie but, uh, it's going to happen. Hasn't Congrats. even booked the job yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's there's buzz, dude. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, thank you for coming on, man. Yeah. Thank you for doing this again. Um, of course. Yeah. This was a lot of fun having you, and uh, yeah. I will uh, let you. know. I finally got the water down. Yeah, yeah, thank you guys. Know, I was, was going to yeah. say, I'm really proud of you. What a journey. Yeah. yeah. Well, this was on. a lot of fun, dude. Thank you very much for doing this. And, Happy uh, to be here. We'll see you. We'll have we'll you see back you anytime. Week. Cool. We have to have him and Eric come on, is what we should do. Ah, oh, that'd be fun. Because we need Eric to come need back. A bigger anyway. chair. Oh. <laughs> Eric talked about poker. Oh! Eric talked about poker for 35 fucking minutes. Yeah. So, like, he did. It, that interview just kind of got cut short. But <laughs> we'll have both of you come back on, and that'll be a lot of fun. Yep. Love it. All right. Thanks, man. Cool. That was Jason Dolly. Uh, thank you, Jason. Jason Dolly from Good Luck Charlie. I did you know he was from Good Luck Charlie? No, I didn't know that. He I know. I looked up Charlie. up on IMDb right before he got here, and I was like, "When was he on Good Luck Charlie?" Because I was there like almost every day. God, when you I don't remember working with him? Not, not at all. No, yeah. he was pretty bad if he was there. Do you think this joke is better or worse than the Laurel Canyon joke? Feels like it has a little more legs. Yeah, it's got a little more good joke aroma to it. He's an easy guy to talk to. Mm -hmm. He's a very thoughtful human, so he he has a lot of good opinions and and is good at conversing. Yeah, I had some things that I wanted to say, and I can't remember what they were, or I didn't want to step on what he was saying, but I wanted to comment on when he was talking about uh, sort of finding uh, the the reason that you love this job and you the reason that like not that you won't take it for granted, but that you won't take it for granted that that this is an amazing job to have and an opportunity to have um, to work on any set. I was thinking about how I used to think it was kind of dumb to go meta and think about this job as like um, such a lovely experience every single time you do it, whether you're on set or off set. Um, I forget what I was thinking about, but just entertainment in general. You have to you have to find out why you want to do it uh, for every mm -hmm. single project, even if it's something you don't love. You have to figure out a reason if you're going to put something on tape why you'd want to do it. Even if you have to convince yourself, I think you have to give yourself confidence going into a room or putting something on tape. Because I mean, that's I think that's what I figured out during the strike is that even if it's material that I'm not necessarily passionate about that or that I wouldn't it wouldn't be my favorite project to work on. I think it's about keeping the muscle loose and being on set. And so I have to tell myself why this or this project or this commercial or, or something would be beneficial to me and how I can get behind it. Um, but I think he really understood that in the last five years. And that's something that I'm starting to understand. Can I just say the whole thought that you just had, it's weirdly timed because I was laying in bed last night and I mean, not to go into the details of it, but you and I are going out for the same, I'm hoping you go out for this, but going out for the same project. And it's a project that feels very uh, comfortable to me, something mm -hmm. that I've done my whole life. And last night I was laying in bed and I was like, man, what, what more could I have done? What more passion could I have behind like going out for this thing? And I was thinking like, 
I, it's it's exactly what you're saying though of like kind of having to remind myself that like why is it that I love doing this thing? Because it can't just be that I'm comfortable doing this project. I'm. It feels like oh, this is the right. Oh, this is the, the the job that best suits my life. It's like no, nah, man. Like that's not why I do it. I do it because I love making people laugh and I love the formatting of it and I love the the way that people get together and watch those shows. I love the actual work on those projects. Mm -hmm. Like, and I I wish I almost wish that I would have come to that realization prior to actually doing the tape because I felt more fired up about it like having those thoughts and going fuck man I really want to get this thing now because like I feel that way and maybe I would have done a better job with the tape you know yeah. and I think that that is such a good point of like you kind of do have to have like your reasoning can't if, if money is ever the reasoning for acting you'll pro you'll never book a job no and also money is not a good reason for the job uh it's it's rare that you even make good money on it. It's like when we had the episode that hasn't been released yet. When we had Michael on, like, it's it's being a comedian. He he wants to do nothing other than be on stage and make material to make people laugh and relate to people. So he said something that day that really like has stuck with me. Was he said when we were talking about stand up, he goes, "You have to make basically an eight year commitment to yourself." Yeah. That you're going to suck and it's going to suck. And I thought about it. I I don't want to make that commitment to stand up, you know, but I've made that commitment inherently to acting. Yeah. And like, I, I'm totally okay with that agreement. And that's how he feels about stand up. And it was funny because when he was saying that, I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go bomb for five years and then eventually figure it out because I don't have that passion. I, I'll gladly fuck up eight years worth of auditions. Yeah. You know, and because I know it's the thing that I really love to do. And so it was kind of interesting. But yeah, it's, it's a good philosophy. It's yeah. also not, I think he's in a different position. I think he's in a riskier position. I think people who want to pick it up because they don't have the experience that we had. Mm. We had immediate immediate success before we had any turmoil, really. And it, build, it, 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 it creates time. It yeah. gives you time to, to fail a little bit. Whereas, like, if you came out here with five bucks in your pocket and made that agreement of eight years, you'd be like, I don't have that. Like, yeah. I need a life, you know? But, like, and I'm sure, like, to fail. before he's where he's at now, you have the three years where you're working tables or you're working yeah. retail jobs just yeah. to pay bills. And then you have, you know, like, I know a guy who's a bartender who's doing the comedian, like, sort of college touring thing. He's like, Yeah, I work one night a week here. I make really good money as a bartender but then he's like when i was trying to get in line for shows i was living with my parents and i would sit on the street corner in, in line to be one of the people that would get selected for a show they would like raffle out spots that's crazy and, and like that you have to do that you have to do shit that uh, makes you uncomfortable i would argue though uh something like this podcast something like for me doing the youtube route those those are in a sense, our ways of, of doing those things and making those commitments, because at the end of the day, it does keep you relevant in the, in the mm. world. And it does keep practicing that muscle of being on camera and talking. Uh, and you're, you're doing your time, you know, you're buying time, you're keeping yourself in the loop so that when the project comes, you're, you know, ready to go. And, uh, so Wait, you just know. let me get a phone call real quick. If you don't yeah, mind. No, I'm going to start crying, but, um, <laughs> well, let's go to that question. There's a good question on there. Most, what was it most famous person you've gotten to work with or just met? Uh, who is the coolest? This is from Cicera RB. Um, not Arby's, just RB. Um, loving the podcast. Who's the coolest, most famous actor you guys have met? Met, so not worked with? Uh, yeah, met. Mark uh, Wahlberg, probably. Did we meet him the same day? I met him at the KCAs, maybe. I met him at, um, remember those like Power of Youth events? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I met Cameron he, Diaz. Yeah, yeah. I've been stiller will always rain high for me. Oh, yeah. Kobe Bryant. But he's not. I mean, I mean it's he's, he's technically an actor. He is an actor. He's acted yes. before. Um, Kobe Bryant was was pretty memorable. I mean, I was talking about it the other day. I got to work with Robin Williams. John Travolta. Yeah. I don't know if if you work in comedy, I don't know if there's anybody bigger to say you worked with than Robin Williams. I don't, I don't know. So that's pretty cool. I remember him being a sweetheart. God, I wish I was older. I, I so like that bums me out. You had people like that too. You did that movie with um, what's their nuts? 
uh, John Cryer and Leslie yeah. Mann and yeah, James like, Spader, all the, all those people before they. Don't you wish you were older? Before I knew what they were doing, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, um, my mom was more excited to meet Robin Williams and John Travolta than I was because I'm like, like, who's this guy? I want to go home. Yeah, you know. It's I like, want to say another one too. Uh, what this is from Olivia zero six one four. Uh, what are one or two of your favorite films or shows that you have seen lately? Lately, you love uh, Dune. Big Dune guy. Haven't seen it. <laughs> um, man, seen lately. I got to tell you, I watched Roadhouse the other day. The new one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, was it so fun? fun. It was so I fun. I want to see Monkey Man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a Dev Patel. Yeah. But uh, but Roadhouse, man, it just was like, it's cool to watch movies nowadays that don't take themselves too seriously. Yeah. Like, everything's so big and serious now. And, like, just to watch that, and they just, they're messing around. They're having fun. Mm -hmm. It looked like they had a great time shooting it. And Conor, Conor McGregor, like, no, he's not a good actor, but he's no. perfect for it. Because it's fun. He's just, and he looks like he's having a great time. Like, and he did good. Like, he just, he went in there, kicked some ass. Supposed left. to punch people. And, yeah, yeah, man. Like, it. like nobody's watching that going, oh, this performance sucks. It's no, like, it's all fun, dude. That's what you do UFC. UFC is entertainment. Exactly. You know, entertain people. So I, I loved it. I thought it was cool to like, I, hadn't, I haven't seen a film like that in a while that just, just, dude, we're just here to make it. Did fun. you watch it in theaters or on your couch? Uh, no, I watched it on, it's on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I watched part of the Alex Jones documentary, which was mm. fantastic. Mm. Yeah, um, horrible. Yeah, by I'm fantastic, sure. it was it was very well made, drab, well made, and dark yeah. and awful. Uh, but you know what? It was interesting. As was this podcast with Jason Dolly. <laughs> <laughs> and let's end on that note. from Good Luck Charlie. Um, Go Flyers! Yeah, that was, that awesome. was a big thing. Uh, thank you, Jason, for coming on. Uh, thank you, Dennis, for being here in our studio, and. Uh, Thank you, Jake. Love yes. you, dude. Hey, and thank you guys for completing that survey, and congrats to the lucky winner of that Nintendo Switch and shirt. Yep. Brand See you next week, guys.